shade covered hanger. To start off with, um, you have your yarn and determine what size hook. A lot of them have what it is on it. This is um, one, well, I think it's an I, I think it's an I9, but crochet hook. And this is what on the on each skein you buy it's going to tell you what kind of hook and what kind of knitting needle depending on what you're looking for the 10s um, it, it's called a k10 k it's called I think it's called a k and it's 10.5 or how to hold the yarn when you're doing crochet because obviously knitting is totally different so I'm gonna start with this part holding just kind of letting it hide around my pinky there and then I'm gonna bring make a gun like you're shooting <laughs> and pull up on that um, what the your pinky does is function as a tension regulator because if you pinch your pinky it, you can stop the yarn from sliding if you let go it can slide freely through so um and when i try to do this i can't you can hold the yarn any way you want and you can use whatever finger you want for your tensioner um, many different ways of doing it this is just how I choose to do it and so as I'm putting in my stitch here this is calling for that double crochet so I'm putting it in and I'm hold I'm stopping the yarn when I go to pull through something I'm stopping it by um, pinching these two fingers together and or this this whole set of fingers here so that I have something to pull back against me while I'm doing this and then when I'm ready to let it go I'm just letting it stay loose pull it straight through so you function as the tensioner for the yarn um, it's easier to have something to pull against when you're trying to loop through things that's how you would do that All right we're gonna make a slip stitch if you don't know how to do that, I recommend Googling a video on how to make a slip stitch. This is how I do it, in my weird way. Okay. Chain. So we have, we're going to basically grab the yarn, or it's called yarn over. When you grab that, pull it through. That's one chain. You need 80 of these to do this. Try to make them as all the same space as possible. And you can always, if you lose count, you can look at it. Uh, each loop is one chain. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six so far, and I'm getting ready to do the seventh. Do 80 chains. Chains. Row one says five double crochets in the fourth hook, fourth chain from the hook. So we're not going to count the one that the loop's in. One, two, three, four, five. So, okay, it says fourth chain from the hook. So here we go. One, two, three, four. So here's the fourth chain. We're going to double crochet means you yarn over one holding on to the one you just yarned over you stick it in the loop okay and yarn over again pull through what you just yarned over and then you'll have three loops on your chain on your hook yarn over and pull through two yarn over, pull through two. You've done one double crochet. Okay. 
Okay, it says put five in that same hole. So that's what we're going to do. Next step, skip three chains. One, two, one, two, three. Okay. And then here's the fourth one. Single crochet in the next chain. So we're going to we're not doing a loop over on that one or a yarn over. We're just going to put our hook in, grab yarn over, pull through. Now you have two and pull through both. That's one single crochet. Next step, skip three chains. One, two, three. There's that one in that same hole. So that's what we're going to do. Next step, skip three chains. One, two, one, two, three. Okay. And then here's the fourth one. Single crochet in the next chain. So we're going to, we're not doing a loop over on that one or a yarn over. We're just going to put our hook in, grab yarn over, pull through. Now you have two and pull through both. That's one single crochet. Next step, skip three chains. One, two, three. There's that one. I wanted to show you, um, if you don't count right, you're going to end up with a whole extra segment of the circle than you should. Um, when you do the counting and you're supposed to space three after you've done your six double crochets, don't count the one that this loop is attached to. So that doesn't count. You would start counting one, two, three, and then you would put your double crochet or your, sing or your single crochet, whichever part you're on in um, but do not count whatever one the yarn is hanging out of you can see that clearly on there don't count this one this is where you would start counting done it right it should look like a bit of a squiggly uh, boingy boing, boing. but that's okay don't worry about that it'll sort itself out and have holes all over the place but that's okay that'll sort itself out in a little bit too when you get to the end, um, hopefully, if you did it right, you're going to have a loop at the end. That's the last loop. That's actually your slip stitch when we started this whole process. Um, the pattern basically says insert hook, yarn over, pull up, and do a single crochet. Okay, so that's the end of that. Now, when it says turn, um, in this case, it's turn this way. Usually when a pattern says turn, um, it means turn it over so that you're working on the back side of it. Um, you always work from right to left. So pretend you're doing Chinese or Hebrew. Okay, so this is, this is what we just did right here. Just like this, this part right there. Okay. So now basically we're just going to turn it upside down and put the loops at the bottom. And then the pattern says round two, turn, and that and the little asterisk just means there's a repeat coming later, and that's where you would start the repeat. So at this point, it says six double crochets in the bottom of the half shell. So I'm going to put this little hole, this great big hole, I'm going to put six double crochets just in there as is. Okay. And while I'm doing that, um, I can tighten up my slip stitch tail and I can kind of set it over the top of what I'm working on and stitch it in so it hides it. Or you can just leave it hang out and tuck it in later, whichever you prefer to do. Okay, so six double crochets in the big hole. Okay, 
Okay. So that's first line on row two. And it says double crochet in the bottom of the second of the single crochet. Double crochet in the bottom of the single crochet. Um, you can stick it in here, okay, or you can put it in this hole here. Um, it's not going to matter, in all honesty, how it all comes out there. So I'm just going to pick a hole and, and double crochet into it, okay. So here's this. And then the asterisk comes in here. So, um, single six double crochets in the next chain. So here's where I'm going with this. You can see in the pattern uh, there's a big hole. Well, that's where you're going to put your six double crochets. And in the pattern that this one was using, she actually did eight. There's eight on each half and it made it tighter which is fine you can do either way tighter or looser it's still going to accomplish what you're looking for and as you can see it's starting to develop from that process there the may so basically follow that pattern to the end yes lives where you run out of yarn the sheep is done <laughs> so um, one way you can do to help yourself with that if you have to add yarn together is is put the two ends together the new end and the old end and then I basically hold on to them as best you can because it gets a little crazy after a while and um, I'm gonna continue my stitch just as if it was normal which doesn't always work when you're trying to do that you just have to duke it out for a while um, so stick it in the hole and i just if i were going on a longer project i just tuck the you just sew the loops in sew the ends in while you're doing your loops um, so that's what I'm going to do with this. I need to do six double crochets in here, so I got two. But that's how you can merge two and pick up where you left off. Because invariably you will run out of sheep. No matter where you are. <laughs> Okay, so when you come to the end and you finished your final double crochet, you're going to have little loops, just like in the pattern. You should have them all along the way there. Um, and the middle's going to be messy, but that's okay. Um, it really is, because it's not going to be a big deal. won't hurt anything. Uh, at the end, so here's our, I got the last stitch on the hook there. Um, it says to fasten off. Okay, so fasten off is going to look like this. I'm going to put my hook through just a loop here. Notice there's two strands on that loop. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. But instead of yarning over again, I'm going to take that loop and pull it through the other loop. And it basically creates what's called a slip stitch. And believe it or not, it is strong enough to hold the whole thing together there. So that's that. Um, you fasten off on the first one. The second one, you don't have to fasten off if you don't want to. You can keep going with the same color. Um, what the person did who did this one is they fastened off so they had two separate sides 
and used a different color to do that border seam so that it all stays together there. Um, you can do either way. Okay. No matter what you decide to do, always do that slip stitch at the end in order to help it um, basically stay put. Okay. And all you have to do is once you've done the slip stitch is just cut, cut your yarn and then you pull it through, basically. Still fuzzy, I can't get the video to behave, but you just pull it all the way out and then you can tighten that up a little bit and he'll stay just fine. And then you just weave him inside here with one of those uh, tapestry needles. All right, so here is a tapestry needle. This is a plastic one, this is a metal one. And I don't really have much of a real sharp point. This one's pretty dull. This one's a little bit of a point to it. Um, so what you do, either one you prefer, grab your little tail, which I can, can find while I'm looking at the camera, and you're going to tuck him in there. So thread the needle, just kind of squish him through and he'll come out. And then find your tail and just, you want to weave it in somewhere, just keep going at it. Eventually you'll feel like you have enough tucked in somewhere. And you can kind of double back a little bit, grab two, tuck in some more. This just helps secure it. Um, in case a giant hurricane comes by and wants to blow it off or, you know, whatever happens in the closet. And you can go as long as you would like with this. I just kind of do three tucks and then I'm pretty much done with it. So whatever's left over, he gets cut off. Jump him off. Like that. And then I just kind of pull a little bit and he'll, he'll hide himself inside and you won't even know he existed. Ha ha ha. And you're going to do that to both, both pieces, the leftovers, the little stragglers. This is the back side. This is the front side. Don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's not, the fibers are looking a little bit different than they do on the back side. This is more of a, a sheen to it somehow. Um, take the two uh, ones you've done and put them back side to back side. Okay. Here's our two sides back to back and we're going to start. What I'm going to do is um, hamburger the end of my rope inside there just so I can have something to hold on to and then I'm going to go in um, through the back with my needle just pick one of the two stitches uh, one stitch has two threads at the top of it I'm gonna put my needle through and I'm going to grab and I'm going to pull it up through and then I'm going to uh, make a loop with it. So it, it sort of forms a, a mini knot there essentially. Okay. And then um, the instructions basically say to single crochet all the way around. So since I started here, I'm just going to start here. You can start in the middle. Um, Either way is fine. In fact, let's do that because it might be a little easier. So, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start right here and stick my yarn in there. And I'll come up through the back. One, grab a loop, bring it up like that 
my two pieces together and then we're going to just insert through one stitch on the front side and another stitch on the back and I'm going to grab that tail kind of let him get sewn into that whole process there pull loop yarn over pull through two okay first single crochet For each consecutive stitch we're going to find the two corresponding loops yarn over pull up two loops and pull through and just keep doing that it might get a little messy because of course it's not perfect um, so just try to keep them as lined up as possible as you're doing it and don't worry about the tail just you can tuck him or worst case scenario you can stitch him in later it's not a big deal just keep on going it's allowed to be chaos for the first several times because it's new and just go ahead and form your barrier and basically what I'm going to do is stitch all the way around it um, until I reach probably I, I need to be able to insert my hanger so when I think it's time where I have to insert the hanger just insert the hanger so I'm going to go all the way around come down to the bottom and then around the top and at that point I'll probably insert the hanger and then uh, finish out with the hanger inserted there. Illustrations break down when you don't have a hanger. So at this point I would insert the hanger. I may have to back out some of these stitches if I didn't have enough room to slide it all in there. But you slide it all in and then when you come to the end where you would match up with the hanger, okay, um, you're going to just do a slip stitch which is I'll illustrate with this um, a slip stitch is you would put the hook through again somewhere just squeeze them in there between the two layers pull through and instead of yarning over again you're gonna take the needle and just pull through the one you brought up